Hey everybody, it's your bro, hope you're doing well, and in today's video I'm going to teach you guys everything you need to know to get started working with PHP. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you would like to be notified if I release new courses in the future, be sure to subscribe, because I kind of release them randomly. That is all. PHP is a server-side scripting language. It's used to build dynamic web pages. It runs on a server, not the user's web browser. Although haters say PHP is dead, it's still used on 70% of all known websites. I don't know, that doesn't sound dead to me. Many developers prefer PHP for its speed, simplicity, and flexibility. It's a popular choice for small businesses and freelancers, especially since in the news lately you hear about layoffs in the tech industry. PHP was released in 1995. It was originally an acronym for Personal Homepage but that was later changed to PHP Hypertext Preprocessor to reflect the language's evolution. In fact, PHP was never intended to be a new programming language. It grew organically and out of control until it became the behemoth that it is today. Fun fact, the mascot of PHP is an elephant which is named Elephant? Ella php -fant? I don't know. How I would describe the basics of PHP is as follows. A browser sends a request to a server. PHP on that server processes that request. Then the server sends HTML back to the browser. Our server running PHP can even communicate to a database, then back to the web browser. PHP is most commonly used with relational databases such as MySQL, Postgres, and Oracle. PHP can be written alongside with HTML. Before beginning the series, you'll want to have a solid foundation on HTML. You will need to know MySQL, but that won't be until about video 20. For your web server, I recommend XAMPP. XAMPP is a cross-platform web server solution stack. It's basically a software suite. It contains an Apache server, MySQL, and PHP. You'll also need some sort of text editor. Where are you going to write the code? VS Code tends to be the most popular nowadays, and that's what I use for my own personal projects. We'll write our code with VS Code, then run our code on our XAMPP server since we can't run it on a web browser. I'll show you how we can download both the XAMPP server and the VS Code text editor. Now we will begin the installation process of a server that we can execute PHP code within. Go to this URL, apachefriends.org. Like I said before, PHP code is executed on a server and returned to a web browser. Click on one of the relevant download links for your operating system. I'm running Windows. I will download the Windows version. Okay, for me, the installation process has started and it's done. So let's open it. For setup, we're going to click Next. All we really need is MySQL and phpMyAdmin. It looks like PHP is already selected for us. Then next, remember this file location. My folder containing all of my XAMPP files is located in my C drive. Next, you can select a language. I'll pick English. Next, and give it a minute. Do you want to start the control panel now? We might as well. And finish. Here's the control panel for my XAMPP server. We will start the Apache service. If everything works, the Apache module is highlighted green. That means it's working. If you ever need to stop this module, you can hit the stop button. Let's start MySQL as well. And our MySQL server is working. If you see any red text within this log, that means there is an error. If you run into any problems, just check to see what that error was. But everything for me is running fine. This control panel will run behind the scenes. I can close out of it, but it's still running, which is important. Hey, this is Bro from the future. I forgot to mention in this video that if you ever shut down your computer, you will have to open up the control panel again and restart these services. Yeah, I forgot to mention that, so be sure to do that. Now that our XAMPP server is downloaded, we will need that VS Code text editor. I'm assuming that some of you have that downloaded already, but if you don't, here's how. If you need a text editor, I recommend Visual Studio Code. If you're interested in downloading this text editor, head to this URL, code.visualstudio.com. I'm going to click this blue download button. Select the correct download link for my operating system. I'm running Windows. I will select this one. Then we will run this executable. Accept the license agreement. Yes, I did read it that fast. You do have the option of selecting a destination location. I'll keep it as the default. Next, next, I'll create a desktop icon, then next, and install. 
We might as well launch VS Code, then finish. I have VS Code open along with the modern web browser. I'm using Google Chrome in the series. We're going to create a new file within our XAMPP folder. So let's open a folder. Remember that file path for the XAMPP server? That's where you're going to look. For me, that was in my C drive. Go to XAMPP. Under htdocs, we're going to create a new folder. New folder. I'll name this folder website to contain my website stuff. Then I will select folder. Within my website folder, I'm going to create a new file. I will name this file index.php. The reason that I'm naming this file index is because that is the default for a home page. So we now have a PHP file. In VS Code, if you're receiving a warning that states cannot validate since a PHP installation could not be found, we need to validate the executable path of the PHP executable found within our XAMPP server. To do that, we're going to find our settings file. It's a JSON file. PHP validate executable path. Edit in the settings JSON file. Let me maximize this. Next to PHP validate executable path, we need to find the file path to the PHP executable. Again, within my C drive, within my XAMPP folder, go to PHP, then copy this file path for the executable. I'll right click, go to properties, copy this location, close out of this window, paste that executable path, then add php.exe. Then these may have to be forward slashes. Let's save. On Windows, you can press Control S to save. Close out of these settings, and that warning goes away. I also recommend a few extensions. The first extension is PHP IntelliFence. It should be this one. It gives you access to a few tools that are useful for PHP development. Let's install that plugin. Then look up the live server extension. It offers a live reload feature. Then lastly, PHP server. It allows you to serve your project with PHP. Those are the three extensions that I recommend. All right, we are now ready to get started. In a web browser to access your XAMPP server, you can type local host as the URL. This will bring you to the XAMPP dashboard. We would like to access the website folder of the XAMPP server. So let's add localhost slash the name of that folder, website. Our PHP code will execute on the server and be returned to this web browser, whatever the output is. To write some PHP code, type left angle bracket, question mark, PHP. Wherever our PHP code ends, type question mark, right angle bracket. Our PHP code will be between these two angle brackets. To display a message, you can type echo, either single quotes or double quotes, then a semicolon at the end. A semicolon is kind of like the period at the end of a sentence in English. I will type a message. I like pizza. To save, you can go to the top, file, save, or use the shortcut, which I'll be using. So for me, that's control S. If I were to reload this web page, it displays my message. I like pizza. To make your life a lot easier, we can add a live server extension to your web browser. Currently, I'm using Chrome. To add a live server extension, I'm going to go to Settings, Extensions, Open Chrome Web Store, then search Live Server. And that should be this one. Add to Chrome, Add Extension. Let's close out of these tabs. 
I'm going to go to Extensions, select Live Server Web Extension, Enable Live Reload. We'll need the actual server address as well as your live server address. This URL is the actual server address. If you're on a Mac, it may contain a port number such as 8080. So let's copy this address, go to extensions, then add the actual server address. Now we need the live server address. To find this, we can go to VS Code, press this Go Live button. There should be a new tab that pops up. Copy this address. That is the live server address. Then we will paste it within the live server address of this live server web extension. Then press apply. You may need to restart your web browser as well. All right, that was localhost slash website. You know what? I don't just like pizza. I love pizza. If I were to save this file, it should update automatically. See, within our website, it now says, I love pizza. Let's add a second line with echo. Echo, double quotes, add a semicolon to the end. Let's add another line. It's really good. The output is all on one line. To add a line break, within your set of quotes, you can add a break tag. I love pizza. It's really good. To add a comment, a comment is used as a note for yourself or other developers. All you have to type is double forward slashes, then some message. This is a comment. Our comment is not displayed as output. It's mostly just used for notes. For a multi-line comment, you would type forward slash asterisk. That will begin a multi-line comment. This is a multi-line comment. The end of our PHP script is currently green. That means it's being included within this multi-line comment. Wherever you need your multi-line comment to end, you would type asterisk, then forward slash. The end of the script is blue again. And you can see that this multi-line comment isn't being displayed as output. Now the cool thing about PHP files is that they can contain HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and well of course PHP. So I will also include some HTML code within this PHP file. So in VS Code, to generate some boilerplate code, you can type exclamation point and then tab. We now have some HTML markup within our PHP file. Within the body of our document, I'll add maybe a button. I'll create a button to order a pizza. I should probably precede this button with a line break. So there's our button. It currently doesn't do anything, but that's just a demonstration that you can include more than just PHP code within a PHP file. All right, everybody. So that is an introduction to PHP. In the next video, we'll discuss variables. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please let me know by smashing that like button, leave a random comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.